All right, friends. Um, good to see all of you. Welcome back for the second night of our virtual mission trip to Honduras. We had a, a good beginning last night, even with a few technical glitches. But um, those of you who are with us last night still, I think we're able to get um, a good feel for the country and the mission. And we had rich conversation about um, the realities of migration in Honduras, as well as the impact of the pandemic. Uh, and so uh, anyway, we'll build on last night and, uh, and have another good session tonight. Um, let me go ahead and uh, give a, a few words of instruction here at the very beginning. And, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of step into our content for tonight. Um, so here, first word of instruction has to do with uh, language and translation. So um, tonight we have with us uh, Jorge Arellano, uh, who is a skilled translator. And throughout the evening, uh, you're able to hear his translation simultaneous with the presenter. Um, in order, uh, when the presenter is speaking English, uh, Jorge will be translating in Spanish. And when the presenter is speaking in Spanish, Jorge will translate into English. So at any point, uh, if the presenter is not speaking a language you understand, and you would like to benefit from Jorge's translation, then all you need to do is if you go down, take your cursor to the bottom of the Zoom uh, screen, you'll see there um, an option for interpretation. If you will select the English channel, then you will hear Jorge's translation. So again, if the presenter is speaking in Spanish, if you're on the English channel, then you'll hear, hear Jorge. If the presenter is speaking in English, as I am now, if you choose the English channel, you'll hear Jorge uh, translating into Spanish. All right. Is that clear? And is, does anyone need me to explain that one more time? Maybe the bottom line is if you don't understand what's going on, choose the English channel on that interpretation uh, button and you should hear Jorge. Okay, so uh, that's new from last night. Um, a couple of things that are similar to last night is that as we move through the evening, if you have questions about what's being presented, just uh, drop those in the chat. Uh, Callie is going to translate those in written form and um, and we'll keep track of them. And so we'll be able to come back to those questions later on. Um, the, the one other thing I want to mention at the beginning is that uh, tonight we have the opportunity to um, to have breakout sessions with um, church to church partners that are already, established. So um, I, have a, I have a request for our folks on the call. If you're from First Dallas, First UMC Dallas, if you're from Christ's Foundry, uh, or if you're from Elmwood, El Buen Samaritano, um, if you would please let me know that in the chat, uh, where, what church you're from, your name and what church you're from, and then I'll be able to put you in the right breakout room later on tonight. Same thing if you're from La Cofradia, if you'll let me know your name and that you're from La Cofradia, then put that in the chat. S similarly, if you're from Prosper UMC, tell me your name and that you're from that church. And if you're from El Pescadero, tell me your name and, and, uh, that church. That way later on, uh, I can sort everybody into breakout rooms and you'll be with um, folks from your partner church. So, um, and uh, I see them coming through. Excellent. Callie, I know I'm asking a lot of you, if you can try to track those for me as well, um, maybe we can connect on the break and you can help me do that. All right. All right. So that's enough preliminaries, enough logistics. Uh, let's begin to 
uh, get into what we came here for, uh, to connect, to continue to build relationships across uh, international borders, uh, to learn from one another, and, and, and to spend time together that will uh, be mutually uh, a blessing to folks in North Texas and to the folks in Honduras. Um, and doing this virtually um, because of the pandemic, we know there's some things missing, some things lost, and yet um, we all got to sleep on our own beds last night. We all got to um, see folks important to us uh, today, and yet we're able to reconnect um, this way. And so we're grateful for technology and the way that we can do that. So to begin our second evening, um, which will focus on church-to-church -church partnerships, um, uh, we want to invite, uh, did I see in the chat, Pastor Yamileth, are you leading our opening devotional this evening? And if so, uh, feel free to lead us. Amén. Bendiciones a todos. Inclinamos nuestro rostro. Oramos. Amado, amado Dios, en esta hermosa tarde nos acercamos a ti. Una vez más, con corazones agradecidos. Por una oportunidad más. El poder estar reunido como su pueblo. Juntos, extendiendo el reino de los cielos. Te pedimos, oh Dios, tu dirección durante todo este tiempo. Que sea un... Que sea, un, que sea un tiempo de bendición, tiempo de, tiempo de conocernos, tiempo de estar juntos a través de este medio virtual. Te pedimos que te quedes con nosotros. Que nos guíes en, en todo lo que vamos a hacer. A ti, Señor, sea la gloria, la honra y el honor. Hoy, mañana y siempre. Amén. Amén. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, for that uh, beautiful opening prayer. And, and I believe I saw that Pastor Lara from La Cofradía has, has a scripture to share. Sí, buenas tardes. Soy el pastor Lara. ¿Me oyen? Hola. Sí, pastor, sí, pastor. escuchamos. Ok. Quiero leer el Salmo 133. Me pareció bien traer esta lectura bíblica. Y quiero leerla para bendición de nuestra vida. Mirad cuán bueno y cuán delicioso es habitar los hermanos juntos en armonía. Es como el buen óleo sobre la cabeza, el cual desciende sobre la barba, la barba de Aarón, y baja hasta el borde de sus vestiduras. Como el rocío de Hermón, que desciende sobre los montes de Sión, porque allí envía Jehová bendición y vida eterna. Amén. All right. So I believe, um, as I mentioned, the, the topic for tonight uh, is church-to-church -church partnerships. Um, 
the General Board of Global Ministries has uh, a longstanding program called In Mission Together. And, and we are blessed to have with us tonight um, from the General Board of Global Ministries, Ministries, Reverend Edgar Avitia. And so I want to turn it over to him to share a little bit with us about the In Mission Together program, uh, talk to us about uh, the vision for this program, uh, the, the values that have shaped it, and, um, and the goals of the program. And Edgar, whatever else you'd like to share as kind of a foundation as we begin to talk about um, these partnerships between North Texas and the mission in Honduras. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> I am Edgar, Edgar Avitia Legarda, a clergy uh, from Rio, Texas, annual conference serving as a regional representative for Latin America and the Caribbean with Global Ministries, was asked to uh, briefly uh, speak on the background, purpose, goals, goal, vision, expectations of uh, the admission together. Um, and I will, I will do that and offer some brief additional thoughts. Um, I don't have the sense of volume, so please, uh, I apologize if I am speaking too, too loudly. Um, Back in the 1990s, uh, with the relaunching of mission initiatives in Eastern Europe, uh, Global Ministries adopted a missiological approach, really, um, for church and uh, uh, leadership development, uh, permeated by, by best uh, practices learned. and. Uh, Particularly, things we we learned in in um, through um, you know different different uh, mission practices we had you know mission volunteers missionaries and so on and so forth and and it was then that these uh, in mission together that in mission together was created. The purpose is to basically to set a connection. In, in, in a good in, in good Methodist thought connection uh, and through through that connection uh, equip uh, conferences and missionary entities for uh, transformational relationships based on mutuality and accountability uh, it's just a, a it's not, not, it's not a network, right? It's not just a, a, a partnership. It's really, uh, in, in, in our theology, a, a connection, a, a new way to go about uh, connecting the uh, people called Methodists. The goal uh, of the so-called IMT partnership is to develop uh, healthy relationships, relationships that 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 hurt that do not hurt i'm sorry um uh, one of our rules right um healthy relationships between within united methodist brothers and sisters in christ across cultures um modeling and encouraging um best practices and that the vision for the mission together, the desired future really for uh, the, the United Methodist Mission in, in Honduras, um, and uh, in this case, North, uh, the North Texas Annual Conference is, is um, to, to set partnerships with, with churches that can can walk 
with uh, the the mission now called uh, legally the United Methodist Church in Honduras that can walk with the mission on becoming a provisional annual conference. Hopefully by uh, by next uh, not not by this but by, by next uh, general conference. Uh, expectations that, that I see is um, uh, for for such partnerships to basically abide by the principles of the mission together uh, strategy. Um, and, and Andy can describe details. Uh, we don't have time for uh, for uh, for that necessarily, but. Um, we, I, I take um, Andia's um, the uh, in mission together coordinator for the mission. He can uh, convey those details to uh, to whomever is uh, is called to to work this way. And I want to add just some thoughts. I I, I wanted you to um, I want to say that. Um, in mission together is really is really not a funding strategy, which it is. Uh, money is involved, but it's is is more a a sort of a sharing of church life. Um, we 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 hope to set um, covenant in 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 good Methodist uh, uh, theology um, a, a connection in which we. We can pray for one another. We can study the Bible together. We can pursue means of grace together, and and just find ways to collaborate with God uh, in in a given mission context. It's complicated a bit because it's you know you we live into different ge geographical areas, right? But um, we we've been trying to do um, to find ways to um, encourage uh, that that sharing. Uh, Virtual Bible studies, uh, um, summits, and uh, visits, and things like that, you know. And and yes, uh, if if uh, if there is a capacity uh, for a given entity congregation uh, to support the the works financially, that uh, will always be um, be welcome. Um, and secondly, this is not really a church to church relationship, which it is. It is more like a church to mission relationship. So it is connecting churches or conferences, ideally. Uh, and and I think we, we in, in the case of the North Texas Conference, we're talking about a North Texas Conference a United Methodist Mission in Honduras sort of relationship. And so it is connecting the different levels of the church in, in different ways. Um, because one, one deals with, with local church for sure, but also with, with districts, right? We, we are about to organize um, very soon um, districts. That's a huge step towards becoming a personal conference. Uh, and and uh, we, we, we hope to set partnerships of, uh, in different levels. And, and for, the, for the, um, the church to, to walk and understand and, and support and assist and, and learn from uh, and, and being blessed by uh, and, and, and uh, offer a, an a, a opportunity to, to go about mission with uh, the, the sisters and brothers in, in Honduras. So um, the, the hope uh, in that sense is that the local churches and the general mission work um, are, um, the, the, their strategies are taken into consideration in, in the relationship of mutuality. So in a nutshell, uh, it's very, very, just a uh, very uh, general um, description of, of the of in mission together.
Thank you, Edgar. And um, later on tonight, when um, the churches who already have a uh, in mission together uh, partner church uh, are in their breakout rooms, I think what we'll do is have a third breakout room uh, where I will be. And if you'd like, as Edgar said, to kind of explore even more of the detail in terms of uh, how different churches have lived into those partnerships and their practices and the lessons they've learned and um, and even just, just the nuts and bolts of how to, how to initiate one, then uh, we can have that conversation. Um, but that, uh, Edgar, thank you, it lays a good foundation and reminds us that uh, these partnerships, uh, first and foremost, are about, about relationships. Um, if they're about anything, they're about relationships. All right. And so to hear, uh, we want to hear some uh, testimony from um, first uh, persons in Honduras who have experienced a church-to-church partnership, uh, talk about the difference it's made. And then, uh, and that after that, we'll hear from one of our North Texas conference uh, churches about their partnership and the difference that it's made. So, um, so I, I want to begin. Uh, who is sharing the testimony uh, tonight? And I'll share my screen because I believe you got a PowerPoint. Is that uh, is that Pastor Orlin? Is that you? Bendiciones, no soy yo el que voy a compartir. La presentación se la envía a Milton. ¿La tienen? Here we go. Uh -huh. ah, yes. Sí. Bendiciones a todos. Soy el pastor Orlin de la Iglesia Metodista de la Seguridad, mi esposa Lorena, que juntos pues, trabajamos eh, para concretar y para poder entrar a lo que es el testimonio de la relación que tenemos con la iglesia de Sullivan. Para nosotros, es, son nuestra familia. Por muchos años, nos han acompañado. Y hemos caminado juntos. Eh, Varios proyectos se han realizado y uno de ellos es el comedor infantil donde ellos pues son los que sostienen el comedor financieramente y la iglesia y la comunidad elaboran los productos para los niños, los, los alimentos para los niños se atiende un promedio de 80 a 120 niños diarios de la comunidad de Seibita. También, eh, pues, durante esta pandemia eh, que aún estamos viviendo, y los huracanes también del año pasado, eh, los lazos de, mar, de, de, de hermandad se hicieron más fuertes. Sentimos ese acompañamiento de ellos en estos procesos difíciles. Eh, no nos dejaron de, no nos dejaron solos han estado con nosotros siempre 
Estas son las partes afectadas de aquí de esa invita. Eh, todas estas familias se les ha dado seguimiento con alimentos y algunas necesidades que, básicas que, que hay en ellos. Cada año, eh, bueno, esto durante el huracán, después del huracán, aún estamos asistiendo a algunas familias. Y esto pues gracias a la, a la hermandad y gracias al, a la alianza que hemos tenido con la iglesia de Suma. Eh, no solamente la iglesia en sí de Sullivan y la iglesia local de la Seibita, sino... La comunidad en general se ha involucrado a participar en cada uno de estos proyectos y actividades. No sé, la siguiente. Eh, este es un proyecto, una escuela de, para niños especiales que también... Eh, la iglesia de Sullivan, al igual que la iglesia local, hemos estado apoyando en la construcción de, de las aulas, eh, equipo material que han necesitado para poder pues, llevar a cabo cada una de las, de las clases equipando a los maestros. Cada año tenemos una brigada médica también, donde 15, 30 personas nos unimos a, a asistir a la comunidad. A la comunidad de Seibita, la montaña y también parte de la ciudad de Tocoa. Esto nos ha ayudado a crecer juntos y a compartir juntos, no solamente los proyectos, los sueños que tenemos, sino compartir nuestras culturas, nuestras creencias. Y somos eh, una misión, un equipo y un solo Dios. Este es nuestro lema. Trabajamos por una sola misión, somos un equipo y para un solo Dios. Entonces, todas las semanas nosotros nos reunimos para compartir nuestras experiencias, los avances de los proyectos, problemas que puedan surgir. Tenemos una comunicación fluida y, y esto nos ayuda a permanecer más unidos, nos ayuda a sentirnos que estamos cerca, que no, no, no estamos tan distanciados, sino que estamos cerca. Avance con la presentación. Faltan unas fotos. Ahí. Ah. Sí. Bueno, Thank gracias. you so much, Pastor Lynn. Mucho más And que Lorena. <laughs> You know, just two, two things that um, I want to say about what you shared um, are these. One is that you, you talked about how important the regular communication has been for your partnership. And I think we all understand how critical partnership is to a strong, or communication is to a strong relationship. And it's obvious that, as you shared, that you and uh, the Sullivan Church uh, are in touch regularly. Um, the other thing I'd lift up is that um, I think it's important to see that um, Pastor Lean and Lorena, your church uh, sees the needs and you hear what God is calling you to do, and then your brothers and sisters in Sullivan 
support you and empower you to do what you are feeling called to do. Um, in this kind of relationship, it's it's been a blessing you shared that Sullivan has offered financial support, <clears throat> but they've directed those dollars where, where you believe God has called you uh, to send them. And so I think it's important for us <clears throat> on this side of the border to remember that um, and to kind of humbly follow the lead of our, uh, of our, of our friends in Honduras. So uh, Pastor Alina Lorena, thank you for <clears throat> reminding us of that and sharing that with us. That's All right. Yes. So then also um, we have uh, with us tonight, uh, Reverend Holly Bandell and uh, Holly, is there another person presenting with you or is it just you tonight? It's, it's just me. Well, you, There's you will be fantastic. <laughs> FUMC Dallas um, supporters here today. So. Good, good. So um, thank you for having me. I'm Holly Bandell. I'm um, one of the pastors at First United Methodist Church in Dallas. And we've had a journey in being in partnership with um, La Cofradia and Pastor Laura um, over the past um, year and a half to two years. Um, I saw a friend on here I haven't seen in a while. Dr. Tom Bryan was my first introduction through Send Hope to Honduras. I think I was last there in 2008, so it's been a long time. And so I'm anxious to go to Honduras again and to be like in the pictures, sitting together, um, worshiping together, eating together. And so we pray for that time to come sooner rather than later. So our story at First Young Mothers Church Dallas begins, um, I guess in 2019, Richard Spees, who's a member of our congregation, um, was a part of one of the inaugural trips with the North Texas Conference um, to Honduras. Prior to that, our congregation had taken several courts and ports trips down to Brownsville, trying to understand the efforts with migration and also to um, be supportive. And so we already had a task force of about 25 to 30 people, which Richard was leading. And so when he saw the opportunity to go to Honduras and to think about church partnerships, he went um, as the only person from our congregation. And there he got to see many of the churches of the mission in Honduras and also got to know other churches in the North Texas Conference that were interested in connecting in Honduras. And so when Richard returned, he made a presentation and we also began to connect with um, Reverend Amy Spar with Christ Foundry, um, United Methodist Mission here in Dallas and also Reverend Martha Valencia um, serving at Elmwood United Methodist Church to really figure out how we might all partner together for and with the mission in Honduras. And we dreamed about the potential of relating to a church together as a group of churches um, with First United Methodist Church primarily um, being white and English speaking, we felt like this would be a great way to connect with other parts of our city, with um, other um, um, people um, of different language and culture in our own city in Dallas, and then also to um, um, be partners with the mission in Honduras. And so, um, when, when they were on the trip, they kept talking about Pastor Laura and La Cofradia and felt a real draw to be in partnership um, with Pastor Laura. And they were excited about the way that La Cofradia was serving in the community and particularly using the gifts of, um, of women in their church. And so over the past year, of course, then the pandemic hit, we kind of did all of this um, work to kind of um, begin to tell the story of La Corfidia, um, and then the pandemic hit. And so we were given the gift of Zoom and um, Reverend Martha Valencia has kind of been our convener for our church partnership. 
and she um, brings us together with Pastor Law. It was so good to see him earlier. I don't know if he's still on the call, but Pastor Law, so good to see you. We we met. There you are. <laughs> um, we have met over Zoom about once a quarter, and it has been really a blessing to walk with each other, to get to know each other in this time of the pandemic, which has been a strain on people across the globe, and to then be able to lean on one another. I know we have talked extensively about how it has been as pastors to be with one another um, during this time and how Zoom and um, has really um, been, been helping us with that. So um, Alan Carroll, who's on the call tonight, is our um, current leader of our task force. And she met Pastor Laura just a couple months ago. And I wanted, I got Alan's permission to read something she wrote after she met Pastor Laura for the first time um, and heard about um, the, the church in Honduras. And she said, the pandemic, of course, is affecting the way Pastor Laura and his congregation function, just as it's affected all of us. They are worshiping from home in family units, just like us in Dallas. Um, and Pastor Laura preaches to growth groups um, via his Facebook page several times a week. His congregation is working with a nursing home in the area, helping to provide them with food and cleaning supplies. Because they are seeing a rise in cases of COVID, Pastor Laura limits his face-to-face -face contacts with his congregation and community, but uses the phone and Facebook to stay connected to everyone. And so I wanna thank you, Alan, for your reflections um, and witness um, as we continue this partnership. And we have begun in a new way to tell the story of La Cofidia in our church through our, our first gifts, which we do in December. And now ready after some months of getting to know Pastor Laura to really get our whole congregation in, involved. And so just on a personal note, I'm away, I'm amazed at Pastor Laura's gifts for ministry as he continues to lead amid the restrictions and challenges. And it's been a blessing to share and pray with one another in this incredibly difficult year um, and to get to know each other in our families. And so I'm reminded um, of the scripture in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 12, verse 26, where Paul talks about the body of Christ. And um, Paul says, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. And so that's what our partnership really means to me. Um, we are praying with one another. We are um, em embodying each other's suffering and also rejoicing with one another. And what amazing day it will be when we can be in person with one another. And I look forward um, to that. May God make it possible. Amen. Amen. Holly, thank you so much. And um, and all of the folks on the call tonight from First Dallas and Christ Foundry in particular. Um, I love the way that you all were creative and uh, recognized that each of your congregations had something to bring to a partnership and that you uh, joined forces and, um, and now are, are connected with La Cofradia and Pastor Laura in that way. I, I think that's, I mean, just a great testimony to um, begin to collaboration and partnership in a different kind of way. And um, we know y'all are just beginning. <laughs> so good. So we've heard a couple of folks uh, speak about their experience with partnership. Um, before we take a break, I just wanna create a little bit of space here in case there are uh, any questions that you may have about uh, the Admission Together program, about the nature of these partnerships, um, how they work, what they're like. Um, you can drop those in the chat. If there are any, again, questions right off the bat here, then we'll address those. And we, again, we can pick up the rest after we take a break um, during the breakout time. All right, so I see a question. I'm just reading it from Alyssa Dare. Uh, you said that you were partnering with many churches in Dallas to work with the mission. Do all the churches in Dallas 
and the church in Honduras uh, meet on Zoom together. So I think, Holly, that's a question for you about how that partnership yeah. works. So what we did to begin with is that it was it was me and um, Richard Spees and um, the pastors from Christ Foundry United Methodist Mission, um, Reverend Amy Spar and Reverend Martha Valencia um, from Elmwood United Methodist Church. We met together with Pastor Laura on Zoom and we've been doing that for gosh, I, I feel like it's been, um, yeah, about a, maybe about a year. And, and now it feels like we, we um, had Alan come on our last call. So slowly kind of adding people to our communications and to how we are um, kind of telling the story of La Cofradia. So yeah, it, it, um, I, I don't know how Pastor Laura feels about our Zoom calls, but they've been a great small group for us. Um, and then I, I envision ways that we'll be able to tell the story to um, larger groups in our congregation going forward, especially with Zoom. Uh, Pastor Laura, would you... Would you like to share about um, your your Zoom uh, meetings with the pastors in Dallas? Necesito que alguien me traduzca para que yo pueda entender. Pastor Lara está preguntando si usted quiere compartir, como la pastora Holly ha compartido, cómo han sido nuestras reuniones en Zoom. Si usted también quisiera uh, compartir o añadir algo sobre, uh, sobre nuestras reuniones por Zoom. Ok. Ha sido, uh, nunca he tenido la experiencia y, y ha sido muy bonita de, definitivamente porque hemos tenido creo que unas tres reuniones aproximadamente. Eh, ha sido de mucha bendición porque ustedes me, me dan noticias de lo que está pasando allá, yo lo... Lo comparto con el liderato de la iglesia. Y lo mismo pasa con ustedes, con lo que nosotros hacemos acá. Y yo pienso que ustedes también lo comparten. Entonces, sí, ha sido bonita la, 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 el tener esa hermandad. Porque nos hace sentir que, que no estamos solos, que, que hay, tenemos una familia grande, pues. Y esa familia que se preocupa por nosotros, porque durante la pandemia pues ha sido un momento bien difícil y ustedes han estado bastante preocupados por nosotros y eso ha sido de mucha bendición de saber que ustedes oran por nosotros y que nosotros oramos por ustedes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sí. So I think let's ask, I have one more question that I see in the chat, and then we will uh, take our, our quick break. So the question uh, is for Pastor Orlean. So Pastor Orlean, uh, they want to know, uh, who do you meet with or who do you communicate with um, from the church in Sullivan? Uh con Mike, él es el líder. Mike Ray. Mike Ray, él es el líder de, del equipo. Con él es que estamos en constante comunicación. All right, so Mike Craig is the team leader. Is he a, a, lay, a lay member of uh, the church in Sullivan? Laicos? El equipo. Yes. Okay, on the team. Okay, good, good. All right, friends. So uh, here, here is the plan. We'll take uh, a 10-minute break in just a moment. Um, uh, when we get back, uh, Milton Yovares, one of the um, excellent staff members of the mission in Honduras, will share a culture moment with us and help us uh, be immersed a bit. In, in the culture of Honduras. And then we will switch to breakout rooms. And again, folks from First Dallas, 
will be with Pastor Lara, um, well, First Dallas and Christ Foundry in particular. Um, and then folks from Prosper will be with Pastor Yamilet. And then everyone else is welcome to join a breakout session with me, where we'll talk a little bit more about the details of um, these church-to-church -church partnerships. So it's uh, 718. Let's all plan to resume at 728. Um, I want to welcome uh, Milton Yorvares. Uh, Milton, I should say, has been a fantastic partner uh, to me. Uh, and to Janet Fisher, a layperson from First Denton, as we prepared for this virtual mission trip. Um, Milton is the United Methodist Volunteers and Mission Coordinator for the mission in Honduras, and we'll hear from him tomorrow when um, those kinds of trips will be the focus of our evening together. Um, but tonight, he is going to share a, uh, a culture moment. Uh, one, we'll have one of these each night. And so I'm going to... Uh, share my screen so you can see his PowerPoint and then uh, turn it over to Milton. Andy, before you do, uh, I, I believe the administrator can change the names. You mean oh, thank you. Okay, well, mm -hmm. then I will try that too. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, Milton. Okay. Thank you, Andy, um, for that introduction. Um, I hope I'm on the right channel and that you're all able to hear me well. Um, like Andy said, my name is Milton and I'm uh, working as a volunteer and mission coordinator for Honduras. But tonight I have uh, just a little bit of um, information for you all so you can learn a little bit about um, Honduras uh, through a screen. Of course, it will be better once you're able to travel and and see it with your own eyes um, in real life. So, but for now, um, I can uh, guide you through a little bit of Honduras uh, and its culture. Like you, like you say, see on the screen, um, Honduras is archeology span and beaches and mountains and delicious food. Um, like Andy mentioned it uh, yesterday about the food. Um, I guarantee you it is delicious. It will make a vegetarian eat meat. Uh, it's also uh, a lot of, uh, most of it, it's friendly people and much more. We can go to the next. Um, so you see, uh, what you see right now, it's um, called Copan Ruinas uh, or the ruins. Oh, and and um, Copan is an archaeological yeah. center of the Mayan culture. Mm -hmm. It is located about 254 miles from Tegucigalpa, which is the capital city, and 70 miles from San Pedro Sula. Um, you can get there by car. There is a wide selection of hotels and restaurants. Um, Copan was also declared in 1980 as a cultural heritage of humanity. No, 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 no. So this will be uh, something really nice that you will be able to to see um, if you go through, I mean, to that area of the country. Also, we have um, Islas de la Bahia, what we will call it in Spanish, or the Bay Islands uh, in English. Um, and of course, you can do a lot of research uh, after you see the presentation and learn a little bit more about uh, each place. Uh, but because of time, I'm just giving you a little tips about each place, uh, just so you can have a little information about it. So the Bay Islands uh, consists of eight islands and 53 small caves, um, 10 to 40 miles off the northern coast of Honduras. These islands have been administered as a department of the Republic of Honduras since 1872, and they're located on the Caribbean Sea, not far east of the entrance of the Gulf of Honduras. They are clearly visible from the mountainous mainland uh, the group is made up of the three large islands, uh, Utila, Rota, and Guanaja, and the smaller <laughs> islands or smiling island groups, uh, St. Helena, Barbareta, and Morat, and closest to the mainland, the Two Hogs Islands, um, and Cayos Cochinos. Um, must, I must say, um, our country director, Thomas Brooks, which is, I believe it's on the call tonight, 
Uh, he's from uh, one of these islands, one of the probably the most beautiful one, at least that's the one that I've been the most, and it's beautiful there, uh, Roatan. So that's also a place that you must travel to if you visit us in Honduras. We also have um, Castillo <laughs> Fernando de Omoa. Uh, it is a fortress located in Omoa Bay, 40 miles from San Pedro Sula. This fortress was used by the Spanish to protect the bay. In the place, there are also some prisons that are preserved intact, and they were used to put enemy troops in them. We also have La Ceiba and Tela. Um, some of the groups that come to the north um, area, they actually do like a one day tour. Um, in some of these places, they do a, a one, at least one day to kind of know a little bit of the area and, and enjoy the sun by the beach. Um, these are probably two of the, the most popular beaches in the north of the country. Tela is located 187 miles from Tegucigalpa and 57 miles from San Pedro Sula. And La Ceiba is 118 miles from San Pedro Sula and 250 miles from Tegucigalpa. Uh, in La Ceiba, there is an international airport and this city is also known as, as the Bride of Honduras. And they have also a carnival, but um, of course we haven't had that because of the pandemic, but I'm sure the city it's it's already ready for that to happen again. Mm -hmm. We have Lancetia. Uh, it is the largest and most important botanical garden in the country. It is located in the north um, in the city of Tela and it, it has huge diversity of species of plants and trees and it receives around 50,000 visits every year. So it is, it's definitely a, if you like gardens and to learn about all these botanical um, topics, Definitely, it's a, it's a place to go and visit. We also have the uh, Cuevas de Taulave, which are um, caves. Um, and these were, um, these are like in between the road from Tegucigalpa to San Pedro Sula. So like probably two hours from Tegucigalpa and two hours also from San Pedro Sula if we go um, back, like heading to the capital city. And we have also Valle de Angeles, which is one of the most common places where we go uh, with teams because of um, how close it is from the capital city. Um, it's only 30 to 40 minute drive from the city. I'm sure like some of the People that are in the call tonight have been to these places um, and uh, it, they love it. And it's definitely, if you come to this area of the country, it's definitely a place to go and enjoy a, a good afternoon and a, a good view with a, and, and enjoying a cup of coffee, of course, because they have great coffee. And we also have La Tigra. Um, it's, it's a national park that it's considered the lung of the capital. It is a humid forest of 60,000 acres and it can be reached by car to a certain point and then start a good hike. If you are a fan of hiking, this is definitely a place to go. Um, it's located about 40 minutes from the city and it has an enormous uh, biodiversity, which is only like 15 minutes from Valle de Angeles, the, the town that I uh, talked to you about in the slide before this one. Um, it is a definitely beautiful place to go. Uh, personally, I was there with some co-workers um, last weekend, um, like three days ago, and it's, it's definitely a place to go and fully recommend it if you wanna have a, a huge change from the city in such a short amount of time by car. So that's, that's it for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, made you a little bit curious of coming down and, and going to any of these places. And like I said, if you want more information, you can definitely um, get a copy maybe of the slideshow if you want it. You can 
request that to Andy or myself and um, get more information about it on the on the web. So thank you very much. Thanks, Milton. Thank you, Milton. All right. So um, with that, with the remaining time we have tonight, um, we have 20 minutes. We're going to separate into breakout rooms. And so in just a moment, I'll open the rooms. Um, the folks from First Dallas, uh, Christ Foundry, and La Cofradia will be in room one. Uh, folks in from Prosper and Pastor Yamileth will be in room two. Uh, and then everyone else I've assigned to room three. Um, so two quick words. Um, I'm still not sure which Andy Lewis is Pastor Jamileth, so I assigned all of the Andy Lewises to room number two. <laughs> if, uh, if you if that's not the room you want to be in, then uh, we'll do our best to move you. Um, uh, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, and then for everyone in room three, uh, you know this is that this is that point on the mission trip where. If you're out of gas and there's a fiesta happening and you just need to go back to the bunk and, um, you know, lay down and opt out, then that's okay. Uh, if you're in room three and it's time for you to go tuck in the kids, that's okay. But if you want to stay on and uh, talk a little bit more about these partnerships with me and others on the call, then uh, that room will be open and we'd love for you to stay as long as um, again, is that's valuable time for you. So um, any questions before I open the rooms? Reverend Pena, good night. Buenas noches. Pastor Jamilet, buenas noches. Buenas noches. 